Hello, I'm Brant Willey. I am the producer director. Hi, I'm Bo Youngblood. I am a producer. Hi, my name is Sylvia Hoffman. I am a 2022 Beijing Olympic medalist. Hi, I'm Asia Evans, Olympic medalist, three-time Olympic bobsledder. Tiffany Parker, Team USA track and field athlete and on the U.S. bobsled team. I was a heptathlete, so seven different disciplines. I was 135 pounds competing as a track and field athlete. Went into bobsled, got up to 175 pounds was the heaviest that I had gotten because you want to wear your weight. Like you want to have speed, you want to have power, but the more weight that you can move on your body, the less weight you have to move in the sled. And so it's beneficial for both sides, the brakeman in the back and the pilot in the front. And so for me, it was wild. I'm born and raised Los Angeles, California, palm trees. The only thing I knew about snowflakes was a white piece of paper that you cut out in middle school or you hung them from the ceiling, they all look different. That was my experience going into the life of winter. And so um, it, it was very intimidating because I went from being at the top of one sport to coming in to something, it was a whole new world. I was now um, a small fish in a big pond. And so just being able to look at the athletes that were before me, alongside of me and, and learning, um, learning how to be a bobsled athlete, like the, all components from working on the sled to motivating your teammates, everything that it takes to be able to uh, put everything that you have behind the sled. And so, yeah, that was my experience going into the world of winter. To be very transparent, how I got here was one of my friends was a decathlete and he called me on the phone one day and was like, you have speed and power as a heptathlete, that's kind of your jam. I think you should try bobsled. I was just like, uh, no. He was like, too late, I already gave your information to the coach. So that's lit literally Dion, that was our recruiting coach, called me and was like, hey, we would love to have you come out to this next Olympic hopeful um, show that we're doing. Like, we want you to do a combine, which is how you get into the sport. And so very similar to my wheelhouse, it's a multi, you throw a shot put, you do a broad jump, you do a 30 meter. I was like, oh, I can do that. I can maneuver some events. Uh, yeah, pushing a bobsled is a learning curve for some people. I was one, I'm a technician. I, I thrive on just like physics and a 10,000 hour rule. So the ability to just get behind the sled and just get it was not me. So it was very intimidating, it was difficult. And I had to do a lot of just communicating with different people and, and watching these women that are the best at what they do and just learning. Like my main thing was just to learn how to be the best bobsled athlete that I could be. Rough riders, you know, tough long, Eve. Yeah, 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 they wanna know. I'm from the south side of Chicago, so I'm not too scared of cold, but um, I grew up as a track and field athlete as well. I come from a pretty athletic family. My mother ran track, my father was a swimmer, my brother played in the NFL for eight years, and my uncle and cousin both played Major League Baseball. So it was almost like my turn to pull up the seat to the table. <laughs> and so um, track and field was my bread and butter for a while. Uh, attended University of Illinois, and that's what my coach told me about bobsled and how he thought I'd be a great fit. And even prior to becoming a, an Olympian in bobsled, Cool Running was like top five favorites. So I'm like, man, you're not gonna just turn me into like Cool Runnings. I've seen the movie, I, I don't believe it. And so then fast forward to about a year or so after I graduated, I was working as a personal trainer, sports performance coach and helping all my clients uh, excel. And I just missed that bug myself. And so that summer I trained with my brother and all these NFL guys to do the combine like she spoke of. Um, I was doing so well, the coach pulled me out the competition and was like, okay, let's see if you could push a bobsled. So then that's how I kind of started learning. And then the rest was history. I was stuck from there. <laughs> so like, I'm an athlete, especially as a track and field athlete, I have a very confident front. So I'm going into a sport to where I want to dominate from the beginning. I never ran away from that, but also I know what I was doing. So I learned to push the sled, but when it came down to going down the ice, that's an entirely different process that you cannot prepare for. And so I had my game face, push the sled, we jump in, first time down the ice, it's like roller coaster from hell. And then I get down to the finish line and all my teammates and everyone have their phones out like trying to get my reaction. And I, you know, I kept it cool, cute. Went to the bathroom, 
call my mom like, hey, so did I tell too many people we did this? Like, can I come home? This is some crazy <laughs> stuff. I don't get it. Like, why is this a sport? How does this qualify for the Olympics? And she let me vent for like five minutes and then she told me I better go back to the top of the hill and go again. So now I'm here. I know you see the dragon. I actually grew up in the sport of basketball. Um, I did basketball for 15 years. I uh, went to college for basketball, um, but I always felt like there was something else for me. Uh, everyone thought I was, was going to go to the WNBA, and they were like, yeah, you do WNBA. It's going to be great. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to be great. And I just wasn't enthusiastic about it. So when I went to college and I graduated, I actually switched sports to USA Weightlifting. And I felt like it was a sport that I chose. And I was in love with the sport. There was just different things about it. It was strength-based. A lot of people said that women, you know, we shouldn't be lifting weights. We shouldn't be doing this, this, and that. And I was just like, wow, we are literally breaking down all of those skepticisms about what females can do in sport. And I just loved it. The mental strength that came out of it itself, it was like, you're constantly challenging yourself. Each rep you take on the bar, you know, that's practicing on like how to make, how to miss a weight. And you know, you keep telling yourself, and you hear all these, you know, these, these positive reinforcements, you're strong, you can do it, you got it, you know, like stay tight, like all of these little, you know, words, and it, it starts to manifest itself inside of you. And you're like, you know what, I can do this. So with weightlifting, you know, I did that for eight years, but I also realized that I wasn't gonna be able to make an Olympic team. It was the first time I was going out for any Olympic team. I didn't even know how good I was until my coach told me I was doing it wrong. <laughs> and uh, you know, he's a Olympic Olympic champion and so like I I took his words to heart and he said that you can be whatever you want to be he's like you could be a world champion you could be an Olympian you can you know you can medal at the Olympics but he's like with what you're doing you're doing it all wrong and so I had him sit me down one day and he showed me and I'm like you're right and it became an uphill battle for me like every day I'm like I got to do this I'm working full-time you know I'm doing eight to five rushing to the gym and trying to chain for like two and a half hours before I go home, cook dinner and go to sleep and try to do it all again the next day. And I did that for a good six years and it was just the uphill battle. CrossFit started to come into play. There's a lot more people starting to get into the sport. The totals are increasing. So like I had to do that much better just to make any international teams. And you know, I was blessed enough to make three international teams within those eight years. Um, but like my friend said, she did the next Olympic hopeful and I saw it one day I was super depressed I'm trying to work I can't think I look at my Instagram and I see this ad saying next Olympic hopeful scouting camp and I'm like just do a scouting camp you never know what can happen so I did it and actually like five of those sports or the NGBs they actually said hey we want you to compete for us which sport do you want to do and I'm like well I'm not here to, to choose one I'm here for you guys to choose me because I'm 28 years old I've been doing this for a long time and clearly I'm doing it wrong. So I asked for them to choose me and Bob said, pick me up. They said, hey, well, we have a camp and I came out to the camp and I did really well. <laughs> and it was like repetitive each month. They said, come out, do this push champ, come out, do these team trials. And I kept getting the fastest times. And, you know, little did I know I made my first World Cup team within that first year. But, you know, I accredit my my success in bobsled to my previous sports. Basketball got me ready, not just mentally and physically, but I was able to get the, the agilities down. I never went to, to college for track, but I had scholarships in track. So some of the things that was preparing me, I never actually got to do because I pursued a different sport. Basketball prepared me to be more defensive. Uh, weightlifting prepared me to be more offensive, be more mentally strong and mentally tough to handle the things. And because I was in that athletic realm of Olympics, uh, I was able to actually compete against other people that were stronger than me, better than me, but it made me that much better to get into bobsled and be more prepared. Like, I know what to do, I just have to do all of these things from A to Z. <laughs> and it was an amazing feeling because I got to learn from the best. You know, we, there was Olympic medalists there, you know, leading the way. We had coaches that were, you know, very experienced. We had, you know, Alana Myers-Taylor. She's, you know, one of the fastest pilots in the world and I'm able to push for her. So I'm learning how to do all of these things to the best of my abilities. And what came out of it was an Olympic medal at the end, but I accredit all of those things to my past experiences because without those experiences, I would not be here today. You know, 
the thing, my experience that was a little bit different than all the other producers um, was that I was the only female. And the thing that really struck me when meeting all these wonderful women is the sisterhood and the complete, when I say this, like 100% supportive, no matter competition, family, personal stuff. I've never seen women support each other in the way that they do and it was just like really struck me and it was so beautiful and and um, you know I think that's one of the paramounts of, of the story is you know, very rarely there's there's documentaries or even narratives told about women's relationships especially in a positive light and that's what we wanted to do is the thing that was so impressive about this was like these incredible women who are doing these like incredibly dangerous <laughs> like badass things every <laughs> single day. Um, I will say when I went down, I was like, I could do this, this is fun. Um, <laughs> I was here, I was here for it. Um, but, but I think it's really like looking at the stories and looking at everyone's journey and, and they all interweave and they're all beautifully connected and all you know beautifully different. Um, and then just finding a common thread throughout it all and, and tying those stories together.